I built this uh, handheld Raspberry Pi computer probably like a year ago. Um, but I haven't actually made a build video for how to use it. I've just made some shorts kind of like showing off how it works and they've gotten really popular. So here is the long awaited build video for how to build one of these handheld uh, Raspberry Pi based Linux computers. have disassembled our original unit for the most part we still have the keyboard in here um, but let's transfer all of these uh, guts over to a new case in a year I've gotten a bit better at uh, making designs look cooler nice little angles it's printed at a much higher quality yeah, with a sparkly PLA the back uh, I just took a SVG this pattern and then cut half a mil in and it looks really cool Kind of a nice, weird little texture. So let's move all the guts over into this new case. And in the meantime, we'll talk about the assembly process and some tips for how to build your own. Uh, this body prints in three pieces, four pieces actually. Uh, so you have this main chassis piece. Uh, then you print the back plate. Now this doesn't actually fit on in any way. This is meant to be a version one. And then it just coincidentally, like the layer lines offer just enough grip. So I never made like a latch or anything, but I might take a little soldering iron to make some little nicks like in here so that it grips a little bit better. Um, and I'm probably not gonna do anything else, but if you're gonna build your own, I would suggest make this back plate hold on better. I never took it that far. Uh, and then the last, well, the second to last print is this, which just goes right here. Um, you can glue it in place, but I previously found it just fits in nicely with the Raspberry Pi and it just holds itself in place. Uh, and then we have the faceplate, which is the last piece to go on. It kind of makes the screen have a nice little frame um, and means that if you set it on its face, the screen is not gonna get scratched. Pretty simple. So very, very easy to build this project. You just take your Raspberry Pi um, and stick the Pi Maroni hyperpixel screen on. It takes up the entire GPIO header. In the future, I'd like to make this HDMI because I'm not using any of the HDMI ports and it would just make it a lot like more plug and play. The ethos of this whole project is no custom PCBs, no custom software, um, nothing tricky. It runs stock uh, Raspbian. There's one command that you have to put in uh, to get the screen working. Um, unfortunately, it's just like one little config file uh, to get the Pi Maroni hyperpixel working. So that's it. Once you just do that one little command, uh, this works beautifully. And you could run any OS on this, Raspbian, Kali Linux, whatever you want. Um, it, unlike the framework, or sorry, the clockwork Pi and those other kind of similar units, which I think look really cool, um, but they don't run like a stock Raspberry Pi OS, and they're all built on a commute mo compute module or a, or a zero form factor. So you don't get this beautiful IO of having USB and Ethernet, which for like a handheld Linux-based network security-focused device, having a full-size Ethernet port is huge. Uh, anyway, so that's a little bit of the philosophy around the electronics, but uh, really just take your Raspberry Pi, stick your screen on it, um, and then solder a old USB-C cable to your USB pins here. Um, and we're just doing that to get access to this USB port without plugging anything in. All right, so our next step here, once we have the screen, USB-C cable, and the Raspberry Pi assembled, um, I think this will be a lot easier if we remove the SD card, uh, but we'll just stick it in. So it goes through the front, and that's really it, it just fits. Uh, and now we'll put a few screws in the back here to hold the Raspberry Pi in place. I'm actually gonna go countersink these holes just a little bit more um, to fit these screws. If you had different screws, this wouldn't be an issue, but these screws have quite a big head and I want them to sit a little bit more flush. All right, that should hold that screw a bit better now. Now, whenever I installed that uh, Hyperpixel screen, I actually lost two of the standoffs that you can see right here. So there's no standoffs on this board on the top. Uh, 
so there's nothing to screw into, which doesn't really matter uh, because the pin header here is holding the screen on very well. So it doesn't actually really need those two screws, um, but would be more secure if you if you use them, obviously. So that's it with those two screws. The screen is attached and that's the only thing holding it in. Uh, the bezel will go over it here to clean it up a little bit, but it's that simple. Um, so next, let's transfer the keyboard over. Now I took the original STLs from Zetao Tech and um, converted them to a step and then built this case around these cutouts. Wow, okay, that fits, that fits beautifully. Cool, so that's screwed in nice and secure. The buttons all click really nicely. Nothing's jammed. And so that's it. So now we just need to plug the keyboard uh, into the USB cable here. So, see yeah. there you go. Switch is already turned on. Um, and that's it. So now whenever we power up the Raspberry Pi, the keyboard will just power up and work perfectly. It is a keyboard and a mouse. Um, I mean, you can't ask for much more simplicity than that. So next, um, let's maybe let's do the bezel and then we'll work out the back later. So we have this little piece here, which you can glue onto the bezel. Uh, however, it does actually just fit on its own. I think that gap's a bit big. This is probably tolerance for a, an, a, a worse printer, but uh, it still works fine. That piece just goes in and then the bezel will screw down, um, and that piece doesn't really go anywhere. It gets held in place, so you don't have to glue it in. I'm just gonna try and use these tiny little Phillips screws. Okay, cool, so that's pretty much all assembled. Looks really good. So now let's work on the back plate. So here's the old one, here's the new one. Uh, it's pretty simple. Basically, this is just a circuit board out of a power bank uh, that I bought that was on, like, on clearance. It had a single 10,000 milliamp hour cell, which I've used in another project. Um, but the board uh, is really cool because it has the USB-C in and it has a um, like a th three and a half amp or something uh, output. Um, so the USB-C cable is soldered directly to the output. Um, and powers the Raspberry Pi. So pretty simple. There's a power button here. I have not come up with an elegant solution. Most elegant would be just to solder some wires on here and have like a power button, maybe like recessed on the back. You could just push it right here. Uh, but I haven't done that yet. So that's for one of you to do. But for now, I'll just transfer these batteries and the circuit board over to this new back plate and we'll go from there. So there's also a micro USB uh, input, which if you wanted to, if you found the same circuit board somehow, I don't even know what it's called, but um, that would be kind of cool because you could leave a hole and charge it with micro USB as well. But uh, I have completely converted to USB-C for everything I possibly can. So I will be keeping it USB-C. All right, so once it's the board is screwed in, we're just gonna stick down these 18650s and that's it that's the whole battery system done um, this is 6,000 milliamp hours three 2,000 milliamp hour cells um, and it should fit looks like it does beautifully so now we'll just plug in the USB cable output from the battery just right into the Raspberry Pi we'll stick this cable underneath it's the power bank sensed the USB being plugged in and has automatically booted. So it looks like the whole thing is gonna boot. But I don't think we have the um, memory card in. So there's a little notch here. So it shows the memory card slot. On my power bank, you just double tap and that turns it off. There it goes. So now we will put the memory card in, great. 
single tap. And like before, it just kind of clicks and like you kind of squeeze it together and it, and it kind of holds itself together. Um, and now, a mouse. Um, Kali. Kali. And there you go. We've booted up into Kali Linux. If you go to the Hackaday um, .io page for this project, you will find the instructions on what that command is and how to run that command on here to get the Pimeroni hyperpixel screen working. Uh, and you'll find a list with all of the links to the right parts. Um, STLs for this case are available on Maker World for free. Uh, if you want the STP, so you can modify in Fusion 360 or SolidWorks or Onshape or whatever. If you want this step file so that you can modify this case, um, that's available to my Patreons. Or if you don't want to be a Patreon, that's fine. It's also available for purchase um, on the Patreon page for like nine bucks. So it's not that expensive. But if you want to just print this, go for it. It's on Maker World. If you want to modify it, check out the Patreon page. Um, I'm not going to show how to use it because there's a million tutorials how to use Kali Linux, but needless to say, if you're familiar with Kali Linux, then you know how capable uh, something like this that can fit in your pocket um, really could be. Probably the coolest um, accessory that I've made for it so far is this, which is just a right angle adapter. Uh, and then into that, we insert an alpha. Um, this is an alpha AWUS 036 ACS. Oh, I think I need to do pseudo. Anyway, we can run Wi-Fi. So needless to say, with the alpha uh, card in here, we can choose to use the internal Wi-Fi card, um, or we can use this uh, chipset, which supports packet injection. Um, so by having this stuck in the side here, now we have like a, a Wi-Fi hacking rig uh, with just like one little adapter. So anyway, there you go. That's how you build a Kali Linux running on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is a four, eight gigabyte um, with all of this stuff here. And the touchscreen, just so you know, touchscreen works too. Um, so if you did want to play Minecraft via the touchscreen, it works fine. You can do that too. Um, thanks for following along. Thanks for your interest in my project. I hope that a lot of you guys go out and replicate it um, and improve on it. Definitely improve this back plate, how it attaches. That needs to be fixed. Um, definitely improve the power button. Uh, I originally left a hole here to use a stick to poke it, but at this stage I just open it and turn it off like that. But there's a lot that can be improved, uh, but it's a really good starting point. And there's nothing proprietary. Just off the shelf stuff you can buy, stick it into the 3D printed case, and uh, and you have a great starting point. So. Thanks for watching. Check out the Patreon below if you want to support projects like this and see more videos. Uh, and I'll see you next time.